وقلبي كليم وعيني صارت كفي السقاء أئن طويلا وما من دواء فقومي يصاروا كما الببغاء لساني سليم وقلبي كليم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم أما بعد and welcome to our next video on the Islamic Knowledge YouTube channel. Before we carry on, if I can please encourage you to just subscribe to this YouTube channel, which can inshallah help the channel to grow and inshallah we can make more YouTube videos introducing various books. Now today's book is an absolutely incredible book. Now you will not read the Quran the same after reading this book. This book covers the stories from the Quran, including colored pictures. It was originally written in the Urdu language by Maulana Muhammad Hifzur Rahman Suharvi and it has been translated into the English language printed by Darul Ishaad Karachi Pakistan and this is actually a four volume book in Urdu that has been turned into two volumes in the English language. Now although the book is titled stories from the Quran you could easily rename it as stories of the prophets because the most common stories that we find in the Quran are actually stories of the prophets The first volume discusses from Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam to Sayyiduna Yahya alayhi salam and the second volume discusses from the owners of the garden so it discusses some really interesting stories that we don't usually know much about for example the story of the sabbath breakers the believer and unbeliever in surah kahf the story of the people of saba and the dwellers of arras so the second volume contains the stories of sayyiduna isa alayhi salam as well and nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam all of them related to those stories that are found in the quran now reading this book by the way is actually a part of fulfilling the purpose of the revelation of the Quran which is actually tadabbur and to think over the Quran do they not ponder over the deeper meanings of the Quran now the author of the book obviously does not need an introduction Mullah Muhammad Hifz Rahman Suharvi was actually a part of Jamiat Ulama Hind as well and also he is known as Mujahid Millet because he played a great role in kind of forcing the British out of India and a great portion of this book actually was written in prison uh, so he, he mentions in here as well, the publisher has mentioned in his publisher's note, Mulla Khalil Ashraf Usmani, he has mentioned in his introduction that a great portion of this book was actually written in prison, right? So uh, this is actually quite a unique book. So it's highly relied upon. He was actually a student. The author was actually a student of Mulla Anwar Shah Kashmiri, Rahmatullah as well. And his Janaza Salah was actually led by Mulla Qari Muhammad Tayyib Sab, Rahmatullah as well. Highly relied upon book by even scholars like Mulla Ridwan Kaji and others who write on topics related to end of times and stuff like that. They really rely upon this book. Fantastic book. Now, some of the unique features of this book. It's so incredible. First thing is how easily it reads. Now, with books like this that are translations, you'll notice a lot of typos. But I've got to say with this edition very few typos firstly and secondly it reads so well you could easily read like about 100 pages or so here you've got the story of Sayyidina Musa and Sayyidina Harun alayhi salam Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam just before that you've got pictures diagrams by the way the actual publisher mentions in the introduction that some of these pictures the publisher himself went to these places and took these pictures obviously we don't know which ones but some of the pictures were taken by the publisher himself now another very unique feature of this book is that he regularly compares with the story of the Bible what does the Bible say happened and what does the Quran say and then he critically analyzes and shows any discrepancies between the two so you can see in many places he will make a reference to what exactly the Torah says about a certain prophet and what exactly the Quran says and which one is correct and sometimes if he feels that we may rely upon the, the Torah or the uh, Bible on this issue he will do so so for example here he is quoting the Torah then Fir'aun turned to Yusuf saying your father and your brothers have come to you so you can see he's relying upon so this is actually really really fantastic if you compare it with al bidayah wa nihai of Ibn Kathir rahimahullah al bidayah wa nihai also relies to some degree upon the Bible etc uh, but he's a lot more you could say critical critical of everything and a lot of it is just Quranic ayat when it comes to the stories of the prophets. Here he relies upon Ibn Kathir, he relies upon Ibn Jarir al-Tabari, he relies upon Baydawi and all of the famous Mufassirin, he relies upon them and then he also turns to the Bible and Torah and critically analyzes them whenever they contradict in the Quran he does not go with them, he goes with the Quran quite clearly. Another absolutely unique feature of this book and this is why this book should be read on you know just for a casual read as well along with learning it's that he gives you lessons that you can learn from each story at the end of every story 
he will give you a number of lessons that we can learn from each story so for example here we have insights and lessons from the story of Musa Ali Islam so whether you're a maktab teacher you're giving a bayan whether you're covering the stories of the prophets in a lecture in your local masjid whatever it is that you are doing or whether you're writing a children's book this book is a fantastic book for teachers for uh, educators even for imams really really fantastic he's got some really personal uh, insights on a lot of things that really are quite interesting for example he feels that there were actually two pharaohs and this is actually a common uh, you know idea uh, presented by some scholars he holds this position and then he feels that there were two pharaohs and he tries to prove it and he uses a lot of historical data as well to try to prove this point he regularly quotes Sheikh Anwar Shah Kashmiri as well by the way so here for example on page 506 in the story of Musa alayhi salam here he is quoting from his ustad his teacher Mullah Anwar Shah Kashmiri rahimahullah and he sometimes gives some of Sheikh Anwar Shah Kashmiri's personal explanations and personal understandings of certain ayat so here he says according to the tafsir of Allama Muhammad Anwar Shah what the two angels Harut and Marut taught was not sorcery but sacred knowledge of the subtleties and secrets of the divine attributes and so on another thing that he does that's quite important is that he tries to answer some ambiguous question for example page 176 we have the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Now, if Ibrahim alayhi salam left Ismail alayhi salam and Hajar alayhi salam in Mecca and then he comes back later on to build the Kaaba, when did the story of the sacrifice happen and how did it happen and how can we make sense of this time this timeline? So he answers that at the bottom of this page to some degree. Then we've got, for example, why did Musa alayhi salam end up near Mount Tur if he was serving his father-in-law? Was he going to visit his mother? Was it what was the reason? And he's sometimes very critical. He says Allah knows best. Many times he will come to this conclusion. Allah knows best who this person was or who this individual is or why he did this so this is his conclusion on why Musa salam went back to Egypt does seem to be more or less Allah knows best even with regards to who did Musa salam meet who was his father-in-law was it Shu'aib salam or not that too he, ha he seems to have a very very you could say nuanced understanding of the whole issue presents all the different opinions Ibn Kathir's opinion Ibn Jarir al-Tabari's and then he seems to be of the view that Allah knows best and we just need to follow the story we don't really need to obsess over who this person was he another like ambiguous question that he answers on page 1516 is the time period of Ayyub alayhi salam which is up for a lot of debate even amongst the Christians so he tries to answer it and he he's of the view that he did live during the time of Ibrahim alayhi salam and he was a contemporary of Ibrahim alayhi salam so he discusses this and by the way this book is really relevant for us on the issue of Palestine as well because obviously all the stories of the prophets a lot of them actually lived in Palestine so it's gonna have a lot of discussion about Masjid al-Aqsa who was it built by how was it developed and what are the different events that happened in that place he discusses a lot of other issues and he references quite a lot from the book of Sheikh Abdul Wahab al Najjar's Qisas al-Anbiya but he quotes from it critically taking from it at times and not taking from it at times. He also quotes quite a bit of Shah Abdul Qadir al Dahlawi's Mudih al Quran and he does that quite regularly. And another absolutely unique feature of the book is that he regularly refutes modernist views. So, for example, here he is on the crossing of Musa alayhi salam of the ocean. There is a view of some modernists. For example, we have Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan who holds the view that it was no miracle that happened. So here he spends quite a bit of time refuting him and he says when some western minded reformers could not deny the miracle they took shelter behind these words of Torah and he discusses Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan and his views and refutes them in other places as well he quotes Ardul Quran and he refutes that in many places as well a lot of different different aspects are discussed in this book it's an absolutely phenomenal book you will really really benefit from it like I said volume 2 discusses the life of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well and the events during the lifetime of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so you you can see we have got lessons from the significant battles so whether you're covering seerah you can still use this book stories from the quran uh, the story of Zaid radiallahu anhu the affair of ifq the banu nadir issue that's discussed in the quran the tidings of an unrighteous person masjid dirar all of this is highly relevant for us when we are discussing seerah and this is obviously all coming from reliable sources he's quoting ibn kathir he's quoting ibn jarir al-tabari he even mostly he gives you a reference to it as well uh, he gives you translations, he gives you Quranic ayat to back everything up and he has like I said some unique insights for example another one another unique insight is that he feels Dhul Qarnayn was actually King Cyrus Cyrus the Great according to him and that was then adopted by some of the later scholars of today as well so it's absolutely fantastic book this book was actually in my library for a long time and I, I someone before me had bought it 
and it was one of my uh, family members that had bought it but i didn't pay much attention to it only recently i opened it up and i just realized what an amazing gem this book actually is and i would highly recommend for everyone to purchase the book and inshallah benefit from it if you enjoyed this video then please do give it a like share it with others you know you would be propagating the message of the quran here as well so inshallah you will be rewarded and please do subscribe to the youtube channel just as a motivation and support so that we can continue making some amazing videos inshallah jazakumullah khaira wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh